Should we be using zirconia abutments? Historically, we use zirconia abutments for the best aesthetics. However, we were concerned about the longevity of zirconia, possibly a fracturing of the zirconia. But there are some other benefits apart from just aesthetics. And one of those is the biocompatibility. We know that with titanium and zirconia abutments, we have stable soft tissue attachment. We are able to attain connective tissue attachment to these abutments. Whereas if you use gold or platinum alloy abutments or even veneering porcelain around your abutments, you actually get an apical shift of the barrier epithelium. So you actually don't get attachment to these materials. Whereas those with titanium and zirconia, you're actually getting good soft tissue attachment, which means that you have a very good seal around your abutments. So we also know that bacterial colonization is different around zirconia. There's less bacteria as well, it's less pathogenic type bacteria, about 40% less than that of titanium, and it's thought to be due to the electric conductivity of that zirconia. So we know the benefits of zirconia. We know that this has a much better aesthetic uh, appearance through soft tissue, and we get better translucency of our restorations. But Furhouse in 2005 has shown that there's major discrepancies in about 20% of the cases, and that the majority of cases, the color of the, the soft tissue doesn't match. So we know we have white aesthetics, we also have pink aesthetics, and oftentimes the pink aesthetics doesn't actually match that well. So historically, we know that titanium has sufficient strength, but we know that there has some limitations with aesthetics because we can actually get this blue-gray shadowing of the titanium through soft tissue, and also it can actually decrease the translucency of your ceramic restoration. So if you look at this case with the titanium abutments, you'll see there's some PFM restorations that have been placed and a very nice result for the patient. However, 15 years later, we see some of the tissue changes that have occurred for the patient. We've seen some tissue recession around the lateral incisors. And due to that, we've also seen some gray show through of the titanium abutments through the soft tissue, giving this gray appearance around the tissues. So we have new types of abutments with the zirconia abutments. And you can see in this case that had uh, external root resorption, there's the soft tissue after healing with excellent soft tissue architecture. And we see the final restoration being made with the zirconia abutments. And we see this beautiful translucent uh, material that has no effect on that soft tissue. So our concern with these materials was about the longevity. And if you look at Sailor's study, in 2009, they did a systematic review of 29 studies. They found that metal abutments had 99.1% survival rate, while zirconia abutments gave you about 97.4%. So very, very high survival rates of these materials. But we have to remember that using zirconia abutments, it doesn't have the same strength as metal. So in dentistry, it's all about case selection. And it's about using the right materials for the right situation. And we know in cases where we have very thin abutments and cases like a maxillary lateral incisor or possibly a mandibular incisor, we might have a very thin abutment. And zirconia may not be the best abutment material. So what are the dimensions that we should look at? Firstly, that zirconia abutment should be at least 0.8 millimeters in thickness. If it's less than 0.8 millimeters, then maybe a metal abutment should be used. Or if your abutment is very short in height, that's another indication for using a metal abutment. So if I have 0.8 millimeters of thickness and at least three millimeters of height, I'm happy to use zirconia abutments because that's going to provide the optimal aesthetics for our patients. 